Welcome to podcast number 53. This podcast is the second in our series of the 11 things you can do to become a better writer starting today. We'll go back and review podcast uh, 52, uh, where, where we got things kicked off. We had a pretty long introduction in 52, and uh, I won't, I won't, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on that. Well, I mean, I know, I know you already listened to it, but uh, we'll still recap it a, a little bit as well. So let's just dive right into it. And yeah, I do have a sponsor for this uh, for this podcast, Dunlop. Dunlop actually sponsored the article back in November of 2016. That's where this all stemmed from. And uh, even though they're not, you know, actually sponsoring these podcasts, they did sponsor the article. And so I, I very much want to give them a shout out for that. So, all right, here we go. You know, the, the intro that I did really was talking about what a great experience riding a motorcycle is. And it's just one of the most amazing, amazing sports uh, out there. There's so much, there's so much to it. Um, There's so many different disciplines in riding a motorcycle. And it is such a rewarding sport. And the experience that we have uh, riding, right? The better we ride, the better the experience is. Or, and the more things that we can do as well. So, Let's keep this. Uh, let's keep this wonderful sport moving forward. Uh, let's keep these experiences up, and let's let's just really enjoy ourselves on the on on motorcycles. There's so many different disciplines that we can ride. Um, I rode an R3 at a go kart track last weekend, and just had the the time of my life. Stock R3s just had the time of my life. So let's keep that going. All right. So let's recap. Yeah. Do you want to improve? Right. We've got to talk about that. Do you actually want to improve? And, and you know, that, that true progress takes grit and discipline. There's no shortcuts, period. You want to, you want to get better? Commit to doing it. If you have a goal in the sport, you have to work towards that goal and you have to develop techniques and skill sets to make that happen. If you don't develop those, guess what? You got to change your goal. So let's make sure that we're working on these things. And you got to ask yourself if you want to improve. Second one, what's holding you back the most? I've had some great people write in, uh, write into me, and I, you know, writing down those three things that that were holding them back. Yeah, really appreciate that. Are your writing expectations realistic? I, I think that, um, I think that is a big one uh, as well, right? Realizing that, yeah, we all want to have these big, big, hairy, you know, lofty goals, but there's a lot of little mini goals that make that happen. So let's take a look and you know, make sure that your expectations are realistic. Let's listen to that expert voice. Boy, that one's a frustrating one for me. Uh, all the misinformation that's out there. All I can ask you is listen to an expert voice. Look and see what their writing is, where they've written, how they've written, what the results are, and, and who they coach. What are the results of the people that they're coaching? So, all right, let's get going with five through 11. The first one of, uh, uh, of this one of this podcast, we'll start it off with is number five, right? Set, set time aside for deliberate practice. Set time aside every day for deliberate practice. It's just like anything else in life, right? If you want to get good at something and you want to be serious about it, you have to actively and consciously work at it if you want to improve. That, that, that's all there is to it. I mean, it, you. You have to work at that. This is not, we weren't born to ride, you know, motorcycles at 180 miles an hour. We have to work at it. And two things to this. One is training versus practice. Training is developing that new skill, right? We have to develop that skill, have that, have that understanding of it, right? You have to hear it, you know, then you can understand it and then you can go do it. And then you can make a muscle memory and then you get to go practice it. Practicing is not sexy. It's not, right? Practicing is it's just not as sexy as everybody wants it to be. And you have to practice even when you don't think it matters. It matters. It matters. So budget time for it. Pick two to three drills per week to work on this. And those all stem from the complete athlete scenario that I look at, which is working on your, it's not just working necessarily on you know, some of the things on the bike, but it's also the things off the bike, right? It's your, it's your, it's your craft, your technique, your, your physical fitness and your mental fitness. So set time aside every day to do it. I don't care if it's 20 seconds a day, pick time to do it, make time to make it happen. Very difficult to, um, uh, 
you know, get better at the sport if you're actually not going to spend the time to get better at it. Number six, understanding the order of the sport. This one is really what started the podcast, right? Which is, you know, there just is no, there's no consensus of what is right and wrong in the sport. And there certainly hasn't been a consensus of what the fundamentals are in the sport. So how about making your job super easy? How about making, you know, your, your, you know, shortcutting your experience in the sport, getting to the experience you want, getting to the success you want. And that is with understanding the correct order of the sport. We've got bike placement, vision and focus, motor controls, brake adjustability, turn and rate and turn and point, body position and body timing. That's it, right? If you, it, it, yes, there's a million things within there, but if you just start working on those fundamentals, it's going to shortcut what you're supposed to be concentrating on. So order the sport. Not, not, not only are those the fundamentals, it, those are the, that's the order we want to do them. Sharp people will notice, yes, we've changed the order a little bit. And that uh, we found ourselves as a group, you know, always deferring back to bike placement. And so, uh, yeah, we changed the order. I'm always trying to get better at my stuff. And uh, this is one of the things that we feel that we've improved on. So, all right, number seven, develop a theoretical understanding of riding a motorcycle. So I don't think enough people do this as well. I'm not asking you to have a PhD here. I'm simply looking for understanding that will allow for adjustability, right? All these basic fundamentals allow for adjustability. Again, how you use the brakes, how you release the brakes. Oh, you're in a corner and you add brake pressure, my radius tightens up. Awesome. Great. Right? Understanding the, how those things work. Accelerate your radius opens up. Oh, I put my mass to the inside. The bike turns. Oh, hey, cool. I take the weight off of my inside arm and the steering head unlocks and the bike turns. Oh, cool. That works. So think of it as developing tools in your toolbox, not only on the bike, but off the bike. Again, shortcutting your theoretical knowledge, right? Shortcutting your pathway of success by understanding what the bike does, right? This theoretical understanding of how a bike works. Same thing with, for instance, track dynamics, right? An exit corner. What is it? What control do I use? What are my report cards for it? So developing this understanding, man, it, it's going to pay huge dividends on the bike, right? Training your brain off the bike. It's going to make a huge difference on the bike. Number eight, practicing skill objectives. Again, this is a perishable skill. We weren't born to ride motorcycles at 180 miles an hour. And we, we have to work on this. And we have the example, the, the goofy example is that right, if you go to the gym and whatever, you're lifting weights, pushing weights, whatever you're doing, and uh, you get to a certain point and then you don't go for six months and go back, you're not going to be able to do the same thing, right? It's the same thing here. We have to practice these skills. So practice skill objectives, all the physical inputs that you tell the motorcycle what to do. And a lot of these can be practiced at a standstill in your garage. You can work on how you go to the brakes, release the brakes. You can work on the trigger for your vision. Um, you can work on taking the weight off your inside arm. You can even start your downshifting, your clutch release. All these things can be done in a standstill. You can work on the braking drill in a parking lot, right? You can, there's so many different things that you, you can do. You know, I think also one of the other skill objectives is being present, you know, being in focus. So even though it, it sounds like a little bit of a goofy skill objective, it's the focus and refocus triggers that make a big deal. So practice these objectives, practice these things. Uh, and it's going to shortcut it when you're actually on the bike. Number nine, ask yourself, how am I doing? You know, track your progress by establishing, you know, personal report cards that serve as benchmarks for the different as aspects of your riding. How about the first one? First one, we're going to make it super easy. First one, did I do something to improve my riding today? That's something you can ask yourself, how am I doing? And then from there you go, okay, um, I'm going to work on uh, my, my breathing. So if I can work on my breathing for, say, 20 seconds a day, well, then can I work on my breathing for 30 seconds a day? I'm driving my car to work and uh, go on the on-ramp. I'm going to see how long I can leave my brake light lit up. 
I'm going to um, work on how quickly I can establish exit reference points. How about this? Can you recite the order of the sport? How long can you stand on your toes? Right? So asking yourself how you're doing and then tracking that progress of how am I doing will make your life a lot easier. So ask yourself how you're doing by establishing some report cards. And uh, I, I just think that that is a great, I think that is a great one. Number 10, embrace the reality that not every day is a great day. Boy, this is a, this is a tough one for us motorcycle people because um, one, a lot of us are perfectionists and one of them, and also we're, we're typical A personalities and we don't, we don't um, do well with, uh, uh, with having bad days. Then of course, you know, we, we just want to train harder to make that happen. You have to embrace it. Guess what? It's okay. If it was easy, then the reward would be pretty unfulfilling, wouldn't it? So, you know, it's okay to not have a good day. And part of this is, is, is learning to be comfortable when you're uncomfortable. This is sort of where the rubber meets the road. Because if not having a good day defines you as, well, I can't get past that then the other people that do get past that, they're the ones that are going to surpass, surpass what you're doing. So I see, you know, having a bad day as the pathway to, to growth and mastery. I mean, that's just all, that's all there is to it. And again, if you have established report cards, oh, then suddenly you can see, well, why did that happen? So you got to spend time being uncomfortable. That, that's, that's all there is to it. So embrace it, embrace it and then get over it. Embrace it and then get over it, right? And then develop your plan on making it better. So number 11, stop screwing with your bike. Oh my gosh, this one, this one is, uh, this one's an interesting one. And, I, and I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently because I'm guilty of this, right? I like working on my stuff, I do. So we have to look at this as two ways. We have to look at it as the motorcycle is a tool for your riding. Okay, that's one. Motorcycle is a tool for your riding. But also, if you're a gearhead, great, be a gearhead. But you have to learn to separate the two. So, it, you know what? It's, it's almost that you need a motorcycle to, this is a good excuse to get another motorcycle, by the way. You have to learn to separate actually like having this pristine incredible bike that you know every every you know all the bolts match um has the pipe on it that you want uh, I, I, you know it's super clean of course you don't want to ride it then well that ends up being the issue is that that people people will say oh well i'm afraid of crashing my supermodel well if you're afraid of crashing your supermodel get a different bike and you can't have the goal of a lap time but then also be afraid of crashing your bike. I don't want you to fall down, but then you've got two goals that go completely opposite of each other. So if you're a gearhead, absolutely positively, please be a gearhead. Buy stuff, make your bike how you want it, but understand that you have to separate that from a tool for getting your riding better, for, for having your, you know, working on your riding. Stock motorcycles nowadays are incredible beyond incredible what they can do. And I've seen some, some crazy things with, uh, with being done with stock motorcycles. So stop screwing with your bike. If you wanna be a better rider, get a bike that you can ride to work on your riding skills, whether it's an XR100, a TTR 125, a bone stock 600, whatever. Doesn't matter, the bike doesn't matter. R3s at a go-kart track, oh my gosh, how much fun, stock R3s. Stock tires, everything. So much fun. So stop screwing with your bike. You want to be a gearhead? Get a bike to be a gearhead. I completely embrace it. I think it's fantastic. Um, I, I think you have to realize is that you know if you want to get better, if you want to get better at the sport, a titanium shock spring is not going to do it. You want to get better at the sport, thinking you need a MotoGP bike or you know the latest whatever isn't going to do it. Um, Work on you and work on your riding to be a better rider. Get a motorcycle that you can that you can you know play with um, as a gearhead. Nothing wrong with that. So, all right, there you go. Those eleven things. These are all things that we can start working on today to get you to be a better rider. 
We want to keep you and keep you in the sport. We want to keep growing our sport. And uh, I think these are some great ways uh, for you to be able to do it. Copyright 2018, Ken Hill Coaching, all rights.